Welcome to HCS Connects. I'm Kelly Goral with Hampton City Schools. Today we have Shamika Pollard with us who is our new Chief of Secondary School Leadership. So welcome to HCS Connects. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. And I said new Chief of Secondary School Leadership, but you kind of been in this spot for the last two, almost three months. So not almost. new. You've had to hit the ground running. I have. It has been very, very exciting. Every day I'm learning a new responsibility that I have. So it's been very exciting. Um, I will say everyone has been very supportive and welcoming to me. So I do feel right at home in this position. It's those uh, other duties is assigned. That's Absolutely. That part. Absolutely. <laughs> that part. <laughs> that part. That part right there. <laughs> but again, you know, a, a lot of the individuals that I've had the opportunity to speak with this summer, they're not new to Hampton City Schools. And right. you're not new to Hampton City Schools. I am not. I joined the Hampton City Schools family gosh, in 2004, okay. I taught at Hampton High Mathematics for two years. I transitioned to Kickatan. I've served at Phoebus and Hampton High School okay. as an AP at Hampton and a teacher at Hampton. So a lot of experience at all of the high schools. Except Bethel. Oh, you haven't had? So I haven't had an opportunity to officially be a Bruin until now. Well, yes, I was going to say now you are since you're overseeing the middle and the high school. Right. So we need to get you a Bethel t-shirt. Absolutely. I hope Dr. Howard is listening to this interview right now. So the next time you stop in, she'll have that t-shirt for you. She'll have it ready. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself though. Like, you know, I know you said that you came to Hampton in 04. Right. But tell us prior to 04, like your education, growing up, those sure. kind of things. So I'm born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I'm a product of Richmond City Public Schools. I graduated from Thomas Jefferson High School. Um, I'm the oldest of three daughters. Um, so you can imagine what that was like. I've been told I'm bossy and I like to be in charge. I don't believe that. I just think I'm a leader. Um, <laughs> but being the oldest of three really helped me to, to hone some of those leadership skills. Um, after high school, I attended Virginia State University and it was probably the best decision of my life to attend an HBCU. It was amazing. Um, I feel like I have got a very high quality education and I made some lifetime friends at Virginia State University. Um, after that, I taught two years in Richmond while pursuing my master's degree. Um, and I moved here because I was living at home with my parents and I felt like I was rich because all of my money was mine and I felt that I could be stuck. <laughs> and so I moved to Hampton and, and the rest is history. Why Hampton? My best friend lived here okay. and her mom said, well, I could probably get you an interview at Hampton High School. I said, okay, do it. And she did. <laughs> And I moved sense. here. I've been here ever since, and I absolutely love it here. Excellent. So 2004, if I'm doing the math correctly, that means you're going into your 20th year? Is this your 20th or your 19th? You know, it's hard to keep track, but I started teaching in 2002. So oh, yeah, okay. about so you're 22, 22 in education. Absolutely. 22 in education. Did you always know you wanted to go into education? Absolutely not. Um, oh. I entered college as a computer science major. And there were two major, you know, hiccups with that. The first, all the classes were at 8 a.m. <laughs> and I was not a morning person, but there was very little human interaction. Okay. Um, and what happened, the chair of the mathematics department at Virginia State gave me a job in the math lab. I was a tutor. Um, and there was just a sense of fulfillment that I got whenever I helped someone with something and they came back and let me know how well they had done on a test or quiz. Oh, that's cool. And I said, this is it. I have to teach. I had no idea I was going to be a teacher, but it was a calling. That's, that's, you know, you hear about those that, you know, those little girls that play school with their dolls ever since they were little that yeah. want to become a teacher. But that's really neat that how you found your calling right. was tutoring others in a different major that you had planned. Absolutely. And I was not into playing school when I was little. I wasn't into dolls or any of those things. So this was totally left <laughs> for me. <laughs> And were your parents surprised when you decided you wanted to go into education? They were not, um, because they knew that I liked to help people. I was actually a math person, so they thought it was a natural fit. They weren't surprised, but I was. So what did you teach them when you came to, well, when you went into teaching at the high school level, but was it math? It was math, absolutely. Okay. And I taught everything from Algebra 1 to Calculus. So back in the day, yes. I started in education as a teacher. I was a middle school teacher. My favorite thing to teach was pre-algebra. I believe it. Loved to teach pre-algebra. It's so much fun. And when you see the little light bulbs go off 
it, it's a feeling you can't get anywhere else. What I can say though is, um, so I have two, two kids. Mm -hmm. My youngest is in middle school and she was in pre-algebra last year um, and <laughs> needed help but kept forgetting that mom was there as a resource that used to be a pre-algebra teacher. Right. Now that wasn't as much fun. I can only imagine. It, it's different when, when you're to your own. <laughs> yes, it's different. Um, and I had a similar situation when my mom went back to school um, to pursue nursing. I was trying to tutor her in mathematics and it was very, very frustrating. It didn't go so well. It did not go so it well. It was better with your high school student. <laughs> yes. I, I, I understand those it pains. Was. <laughs> you love your family and yes. you don't do anything for them. Absolutely, except yes. tutor. <laughs> so you said you have two younger sisters. Are they local? Uh, no, not really. One is in Richmond. Um, she's a middle school counselor okay. in Richmond at Dogwood Middle School, formerly Benford Middle School. Um, and my youngest sister is actually an engineer. She lives in Pittsburgh. She went to college at Pitt and never came home. So she's an engineer. She works for NIOSH, which is a, di a division of um, the Centers for Disease Control. So are you a Steelers fan? I am not a Steelers fan, however, um, I do visit the city often to visit her and my nephew, who is one of my favorite people in the world, um, and so I am surrounded by Steelers Steeler stuff whenever I'm there. Well, you're also surrounded by a Steelers fan here, because I was born in Pittsburgh, as well as my husband and all of our extended family is still there. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. So we'll have so. to get you some Steelers swag, too. Bethel swag and Steelers swag is on the checklist. On the list. Here. So, Consider it done. <laughs> there you go. Well, lots of experience, like you said, at the high school level. Right. So now coming into this newer role for you as the chief of secondary school leadership, what does that entail? Tell us about what, so, what are those, I know you said you're learning every day. Right. And other duties is assigned. Right. Uh, but really, what does that position mean? So in a very small nutshell, I oversee all of the secondary schools. So that's going to be all of the middle schools and the high schools and our alternative education programs. That's as basic as you can put it, but there's nothing basic about it. Um, when you look at the middle schools, I had no experience, I'll be honest, in middle school. However, with the high schools transforming into academies, yeah. um, there is teaming. And so that is one of the tenets of middle school. So I'm very, very comfortable with the teaming concept. Um, and they're just smaller high schoolers. If we think about it, my ninth grade babies were just big eighth graders. So that, that age group is a little different for me, but good teaching, good instruction is good instruction. Well, and again, you know, I said, you know, I taught middle school and it really is that middle school concept or those small learning communities, right. you already have your, your core teachers that those students rotate amongst so that that's their family, their, their small learning community. Exactly. And when we went to wall to wall academies at the high school level, which you've been, you've been in that since the right. beginning, right? it really is that middle school concept because all, all of a sudden you've got your small learning communities. When you and I went to high school, right. and I know I'm a little bit older than you, but when you and I went to high school, it was departmentalized. Like it you had your math cool. hallway, you had your English hallway. And you know, your math teacher and your English teacher may never even spoken or know that they had you. Exactly. So that middle school concept, which is so great because kids just don't fall you know, they don't the fall through the cracks and it's very hard for them to get away with things, you know, because all of the teachers talk, they talk. about their students, yep. you know, every day. And so when you've had a good day in English, your math teacher knows about that. And what we encourage is teachers collaborating with one another to share those successes in addition to struggles to provide that wraparound support for all students. Yeah. And it's a great concept. And I think it that's is. what has made the academy so successful. Absolutely. And our students so successful. Absolutely. It's working. So looking at some good news this year, yes. I know we have not, um, the state has not released it yet, but based on preliminary data, tell us a little bit about our on-time graduation rate or our dropout rate. Absolutely. So based on preliminary data, our graduation rate continues to exceed 95%. I won't give it away, but it continues to exceed 95% and our dropout rate continues to be below 1%. That's amazing. So we are extremely proud of the work that is taking place in our high schools. Our graduation specialists are phenomenal at what they do. Yeah, we they have are. an amazing um, support system through Miss Linda Pedron Dietz, who is able to run reports and just support us on so many levels. We have an amazing team and they've done amazing work. We really do. We've got a great team here yes. at Hampton City Schools. So as we wrap up, what are you looking forward to this year? 
So I am actually looking forward to exceeding expectations. Um, all of our schools have done it exceptionally well. We are all accredited um, without conditions. And so now it's not about maintaining accreditation. What it's about is exceeding our student outcomes in every single area. So we want to make sure that we are increasing our scores. We are increasing our graduation rate. We are even looking at students post-secondary options. How many of our students are going immediately into in college? How many are going immediately into the world of work? And I will say that our academies have really, really helped us to track that, to provide opportunities for students um, and families um, even. So, you know, I'm just really, really excited about continuing to grow the work that has already been started. One other thing I'm excited about is Master Plan 2.0, um, working with our middle school students and our elementary school students to introduce them to some of the themes that they will be exposed to as they transition um, levels and looking at some of those touch points and signature experiences that students will be able to um, to experience throughout the elementary school years and the middle school years. So Master Plan 2.0, I'm extremely excited about that work. Um, and I know that our community is going to be really excited about it as well. And just a little bit of the background information on Master Plan 2.0. For those that are newer to Hampton or don't understand that, we had a Master Plan 1.0, and right. that's when we had our transformation to wall-to-wall -to -wall academies at the high school level. Correct. And jump in if I'm saying this wrong, please correct me. But Master Plan 2.0 is really, you know, not pushing the academies down into middle school or no. even elementary. We're not no. having a third grader going no. to Science and Medicine Academy. Correct. But it's about really creating those signature experiences at a much younger age so they have those those touch points those different activities so that they have a more sense of self and purpose and Absolutely. learning about their community so when they get to that ninth grade level they can make hopefully a better decision about which academy they may want to, exactly. to go into in their 10th grade year and, and beyond that it's about the portrait of a hampton graduate we know that we don't start creating that portrait in ninth grade you can't start it at ninth starts grade. when they enter our doors um, pre-K yeah. and so l ensuring that we are providing those opportunities for them to be trained to be that portrait of a Hampton graduate I think is also a, an important piece to mention. Well thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's We're been really great. Looking forward to this year and your leadership and really your experience. I know we've thank got four you. new high school principals, executive principals, so we I know do. that they're going to need a lot of mentorship from you and and it's just a lot of exciting work. They've all hit the ground running and I'm very, very excited to be working with them. Each of them has served as an academy principal in the building that they now lead as executive principal. Um, they have established an amazing working relationship with one another. So I think it's going to continue to be great for us here in Hampton. Oh, another great year. Another great year. Well, thank you again for being here. And thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on HCS Connects. Remember, it's easy to stay connected.